You want you want to tell me what to draw too? You have an idea? An elephant? I love elephants. Okay. One of the things that I'm amazed by in making art in a hospital setting is the uh, the the level of buoyancy in people's spirits, a reverence and a celebration wrapped into one. And I think that that comes from your life being on the edge, and that in many many cases, uh, getting to that edge is life affirming rather than life threatening. You know, art can be a dusty thing on a shelf, and it can be a vibrant, live thing in a community. It basically allows for all of what we already have to bubble up and come together and diffuse into something that we can have a shared experience around and to see evidence of each other's beauty. I'll use any color you want. Here's paint. Okay. Pink cowboy hat to match your pants. It's a pink cowboy girl. Cowgirl hat. I keep saying cowboy, but that's just because that's what I'm used to. You just got to say cowgirl, okay, not cowboy. Okay, now I'm going to try this time. To work in the arts and healthcare context is uh, a unique um, point of view on how to uh, help patients. The thing that that grants us such a unique perspective is that we have an opportunity to connect with the patients around what's meaningful to them, not around their immediate medical needs. A child can become engrossed in his work or her work, even when they're extremely uncomfortable, and uh, can focus their attention on what they're doing, tune out their physical discomfort, and that really uh, is something that's that's fascinating to watch. Mm. Green, mommy, you think you like green? Mm. green Here's green for green you, green mama. Nice. Okay. Right. I believe that the art um, motivates her. She's had a couple of surgeries and has done extensive chemo and radiation. She's just been here, just lying in bed. Didn't want to get up, sick, throwing up. But as soon as the doors open and Ian walks in, big, big it's all over. <laughs> and then when I come back, it's like there was never anything wrong. Yeah, maybe you could help pull the tree down so that the elephant could eat it. <laughs> the elephants don't eat trees. What? They don't they eat leaves? They eat peanuts. They eat peanuts? Oh, okay. Giraffes eat leaves. Giraffes eat leaves, you're right. You're right. Uh, the Arts and Medicine Program at MD Anderson is a powerful reminder to all of us that there is a very human side to the story of medicine and medical science. The potential for imagination to explode in the room, there's certain potential for imagination to transform reality in, in a hospital room. <laughs> and, and I think that that's, that's it's more powerful than you might think. But I wish I was a catfish Swimming in the deep blue sea I'd have all the pretty women here Swimming after me Swimming after me, yeah It's just such a gift I feel like Santa Claus I go to a room I put my fist up to knock. I, I knock four times and I just think, oh my goodness, I have something gorgeous to give you. It's a part of your day, it could be the only part of your day that somebody's not asking for waking you up or wanting to take your blood or making you walk when you don't feel like it or um, I'm not asking anything from them. So I think it's uh, part of their day they might want to remember. Yeah. Baby, Jesus, go ahead.
God bless you. Yeah. Did I hug you? Yeah. You won't let me or did you let me? Yeah. Hey, you have to be able to say, hey, here is somebody who is really sick. They're in pain. And then you walk into their room. Now, that's the challenge. How are you going to even wheel this person in so that they can, you know, have a conversation with you? To remember I, we need to take into account that we're dealing with complex spirited vigorous vital human beings we're not dealing with just somebody laying in a bed that we have to deal with a series of um, inputs on various um, measuring mechanisms and, and then base a decision on we're dealing with souls spirits and, and humans and that that um, you know that's part of what the art is there to remind us about as well you actually drum me out. Yeah, yeah. You are a very good drummer, man. You are a very, very good drummer. I'm really attracted to being with, hanging out with people who are perceived as having um, developmental disabilities. I like to make big, giant art projects. So I want to combine those two things. I am completely addicted to creating the scenarios where people are supported, invited to feel all of these levels of risk, vulnerability, um, identify courage, and then do it. You know, and once you present people with different types of opportunities, and particularly creative opportunities, then their whole world begins to change. I also see the impact that it has within the change of culture and creating creative spaces within places where it was never considered before. In my mind, it's you know, it's time to look at other things for people to do that will engage different parts of, of who they are. And they, they're just so open and so ready and so interested and curious, you know, about what's out there and what's possible that they'll just jump right in. That's the first time I ever painted in my life. This is the first time I painted. Courage and creativity are very connected in that they both require a, a leap into the unknown. In that way also, I think, there's a relationship between courage, creativity, and faith. You, you, are, you are accepting that there's things that you don't know. You are accepting that there are things that you will never know. You're accepting that there's things that you will not be able to define, and you're accepting that you are not the only hand holding the paintbrush. Here you go. That pen? All right. Right here. You want to be standing on the elephant's head? Uh, no! On his back. That's why I was guessing. That's the struggle that um, I celebrate with people because it translates that into other areas of life. And just offering um, the opportunities for people to come forward and just manipulate materials, right? And then it's like, oh, I can. And so that struggle of penetrating that first barrier can get you into the land of plenty because we are so powerful. We are so powerful inside here. I mean, I, I definitely don't want the conversation to end, you know what I mean? I, I feel um, uh, that it's just kind of getting good. <laughs>